So we are ending the Rose Cosmetic Week with uh, one of my favorite recipes ever that I've ever formulated. And it's amazing. It checks all the boxes for me and my skincare needs and is, you know, again, a proper cosmetic, kind of like yesterday, what we would consider cosmetics. And I'm very excited to tell you more about it. And I will do so in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Well, let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for, as I said, the last day in the cosmetics line before we move on to Project Soapway. And today we'll be making a face cream made of rose and rose hips and incorporating some lovely essential oils that will really pair with the rose and the rose hip oils very, very well and create a lovely, moisturizing, nourishing, nutrient rich, awesome face cream. And so that is what we are doing today. I talked about it yesterday with the face serums and everything and how we haven't done a lot of with actual cosmetics on the channel. So you guys do know my position on that. I do highly recommend that if you're going to be dipping your toe into the world of cosmetics, pick up books, go take courses, go do the things for sure. This can be a bit of a tricky, you know, area within our making world if you get it wrong. So that said, we're going to talk about this particular recipe, which is something that you reasonably can do at home without really any problems. And again, all of the things, if you're gonna go on that cosmetics journey, go on it the right way. And that right way with cosmetics, with creams and lotions and serums, literally always is going to be more than just a YouTube video. But, I don't know, maybe you'll get interested enough in it to do some cosmetic, you know, recipes and formulations and classes and all the things yourself. So let's get to the rose, face cream video and uh, all the making and we can talk about why I chose the ingredients that I did and you know obviously test it on the skin and do the things. So while I sanitize all of my uh, well all of my utensils and my work surface which I highly recommend a requirement in fact when you're working with cosmetics make sure everything is cleaned with hot soapy water allowed to dry and then right before you use them make sure that you go ahead and take some sort of disinfectant to it i prefer 99% uh, rubbing alcohol wipe everything down let it dry again before you use any of your tools this is going to be very important when you're working with cosmetics because a lot of cosmetics a have water and so that's going to help with the growth of all of the nasties we don't want in our products. And two, if you're not doing that and it's growing in your product and somebody puts it on their face, it could be a bad time. So while I'm talking about, or while I'm doing this, let's go ahead and talk about the anti-aging face cream that we are going to be using today, or making rather. And when I get to the ingredients and the actual recipe that I have blown out, I will talk about that specifically. Now, the face cream is going to be a, essentially a lotion. We have done lotions before, so this is an emulsion that we will be doing with a water and an oil, effectively, solution. And so, with this, the only real difference that this is going to be as far as you know, a face cream and a, what I would consider, again, a cosmetic, look at all the oil within that rose water. That's delightful. What I would consider a cosmetic, versus, you know, just a regular lotion, which is also a cosmetic, you know, legally, is that we are going to be working with actives. And so let's talk about the actives while I make all of this. And uh, a lot of questions from yesterday's video, and I want to try to get all of them answered. So first up, let's talk about the big actives that you could be working with within, I mean, specifically this recipe, but also yesterday's and just really actives that you probably want to consider playing with 
once you start your cosmetic journey. And the first is going to be the hyaluronic acid, which I am currently measuring out right there. I'm measuring everything out by weight. Uh, hyaluronic acid comes in a powder form and it is a large sugar molecule that is really good for hydration. It's good for elasticity of the skin. Again, it is a humectant. Now, because of that, it's humectant properties, it can have the tendency to clump and form a gel very quickly when you add water to it. Always disperse it in water, never do it this way. It's going to be much easier to disperse it in your water phase after you have heated your water in this formulation by just sprinkling it and whisking it in with your with your you know whisker with I, I I always use the actual little whisk attachment there and never my stir stick when I'm making cosmetics a for the most part to ensure that I never actually get any cross contamination not to say that that's really a huge concern because again everything is cleaned but my stir sticks with the actual immersion head those are for soaps. My whisk is for my cosmetics and I just go, so I, I just do that. So with the hyaluronic acid, again, good for wrinkles, all the things, comes in a powder form. It will form a gel. So you do have to insert it in just a little bit at a time or you're going to be dealing with a bad time, having to continue to mix it all up to make sure there's no clumping. Now, in addition to hyaluronic acid, this also has a retinol within it. And a retinol is going to be very good for aging as well. You know, we have talked about, we talked about the retinol yesterday. And so you can get this in a number of ways. You can get it in a pure retinol form. You can get it in a capsule form specifically meant for cosmetics. And you can also get it in a liquid form that has been stabilized with uh, usually a polysorbate of some, of some sort in order to ensure that it is going to be stable to put into cosmetics. Now, when you are dealing with these actives, like these vitamins, vitamin C is another example of that, they are highly volatile. And so if they are exposed to uh, sun or heat or air or whatever, depending on the active that you're working with, they can be rendered ineffective. They no longer work. It's not volatile as in they're going to explode. It's volatile as in you've just spent a whole bunch of money and it's not going to do much of anything. This is reasonably why you cannot just break open your liquid capsules of vitamin A or vitamin C that's meant for ingestion and use that within your cosmetics. It's not super going to work. And so within this recipe, also, I'm putting in this extract. Extracts are really easy, actually. You can get those very easily. They are either glycerin-based or water-based, and you can incorporate those very easily into your solutions without having to worry about the volatility or the stability of them. Vitamin A is going to be one that is going to, you're going to definitely have to uh, pay attention to and make sure that you are incorporating it effectively and, you know, not getting the kind of, well, again, don't just break open your vitamin capsules and put them into your cosmetics. It's going to end up being more expensive if you do it that way too. Now let's move on to the making of this and we'll talk more about our actives and where we can purchase them. Okay, so my water has been heated. My oils and my Styrix and all of my emulsifiers and everything have been melted down and they are also heated. My actives are ready to be put in in the second phase. But first we're gonna do just a typical lotion phase. We're going to combine the oil and the water. We're going to mix it for about two minutes so it will be uh, so we can start the emulsion. Now once this is cooled down, we will then put in the actives. These actives that I'm talking about today, if you are interested in going down this cosmetics route, I really do recommend uh, first picking up your actives or at least doing a lot of research about your actives so you know what you're looking for at makingcosmetics.com. The reason for that is they have really good information about all of the different active ingredients they they sell. And so you, you have your data pages and everything, of course, but you also have, they do really great things as far as telling you the pH, the appropriate pH that you should be working with, the percentage, uh, what it is mixed with, is, if it is stabilized, if it's mixed within a polysorbate 20 or a polysorbate 80 or what have you to ensure that your emulsions aren't getting weird if you're also incorporating an additional polysorbate which is, you know, recommended. It also helps you out the makingcosmetics.com with selecting a good preservative for the solution, the formulation that you are making. 
And so I would definitely recommend going there and reading up on the different types of, well, actives that you can purchase because there are multiple different types of retinol that you can, you can buy again, vitamin A and vitamin C. That's a very difficult one to actually incorporate uh, within these uh, solutions. So I do recommend looking at the different types of vitamin C, following that kind of to the letter. letter. Hyaluronic acid's pretty easy. It's not really going to be too terribly vo volatile though. So you can just pick up the powdered form of that and kind of start playing. And you can use that within serums, within gels, within creams, within lotions, all of the jazz. Now this particular recipe that we're working with, it's, it's rose heavy. It's got the rose water. It's got the rose extract. It's got the rose uh, butters and or oils, I forget which I did, within the actual oil phase of all of this. And it's meant to be a very lightweight cream. So this is something that is going to be really potent with the actives that we have in all of this. So the vitamin A and the hyaluronic, as well as the extract, very, very potent, and the frankincense for the essential oil, because I love frankincense for anti-aging. And, but I want it to be lightweight enough that it can be applied to all areas of the face. Now, the added benefit of the hyaluronic acid is it is a skin plumper. And so that's really good if you're kind of working with the face around, you know, the not eye area. But I don't know. I really like it. I use it all over, all over my face every night and I'm really digging this. But after I've put in, after the, the solution has cooled and I'm putting in my actives, you're going to want to mix it for one to two minutes again, ensuring that you're not at a, you're not going to, this isn't going to fall out of your emulsion. So once that has occurred and I have a whole lot of bubbles in there, which is no big deal to me, I don't ever super mind. If you are concerned about it, you can just go ahead and take your spatula and, you know, just hand beat down all of the extra bubbles before pouring. When it is below 120 degrees, you add your actives, you add your preservative, all of the jazz, and then you can go ahead and put them in their containers, which is what I'm doing right now. These will set up for a few hours until they are fully cooled to room temperature before we test. Actually, I think I let these set out on a counter, open air, no cap on them for like a full eight days straight just to see what would happen. Like, does it start growing any sort of moldies, all of the jazz, so you guys could see? And that's what we're going to go do next. And while we do that, we are going to talk about where we can do classes, because you guys did ask questions. A number of you did ask questions in the comments yesterday. Best place to take cosmetic classes for if you're interested in doing this journey. And I love that question, and it has a number of different answers. So let's get to the testing of this while I answer that. Okay, so a number of options. Obviously, if you want to be really super serial about it, you can go to your local college, your local university, community college, what have you, and take a cosmetics chemistry formulation class. That is something that you can audit without being like a full-time student or whatnot, just to get the knowledge underneath you. And see what I mean about the thinness of this? I love this. It's totally pumpable. It's very lightweight. It's absolutely delightful. So you can go that route. Another option is if you're super serious about this, remember a uh, few, I mean, forever ago when we were looking at the different preservatives and whatnot, and I had stumbled upon this uh, Institute of Personal Care Science dot com dot au. I'll put the link in the description. I did more research on that. Never seen it before. I did more research on their classes, their coursework, and I really like it. So if you're wanting to go super serious into this, this is a bigger time commitment. There's a lot of different uh, projects that you need to submit and everything. It's a really good, I love it. You can do it online, all the jazz. Another option is just taking a new demi course, which is not a bad idea either. That's kind of a low risk. You can spend 40 bucks for the basics of cosmetic formulation and see if you like it before you go deeper into it, you know? And there it is, a beautiful face cream recipe that, yeah, I totally dig. And when paired with the face serum that we did yesterday, Totally, absolutely gorgeous. I really like this combination a whole lot. Normally within my skincare routine, I don't really like to do too much like, but also I'm the kind of person who, as I said in yesterday's video, I just layer one serum on after the other, not because I'm actually getting a whole bunch of benefits, but because I like the process of doing it. So if you are interested in just kind of keeping it simple for your skincare routine, a rose serum, a rose face cream, done. 
kind of awesome. I do like the texture of this for sure. If you are interested in actually doing the recipe or you do the recipe, let me know in the comments. How what would you change? Would you, would you like the, the essential oils I included? All of the things? Yes, tell me. I'd love to hear from you. For the membered sudzers, hey, thank you guys for existing. You guys are amazing. You guys are doing awesome with all of the things. I know everybody's super busy. There's a lot going on. I know, I get it. Me too, me too, me too. But uh, we're all going to get through this somehow. But at any rate, thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys. You are epic. For those of you who are not sudzers, hello, you exist too. Uh, do the thing. Obviously, definitely, you go take a class because you don't have a group of sudzers in the Discord that can help you with your formulations that have taken classes, that are formulators, that are chemists, that know what they're doing. You know what I mean? So you definitely go take a class. But you know, feel free to comment and like and share and do all the YouTube things. That would be awesome. I am out of here for today. I am very excited to get going with Project Soapway for next week. We're going to be doing a very cool project. We're going to be seeing a lot of different formulations from myself as well as from the Sudzers. It's going to be a really fun week. You're not going to want to miss it. So again, the people that aren't Sudzers, hit that subscribe button. All the things. I'm out of here. I already said it mean it this time. I will see you guys all again in a few days for another round of Rose Infused Project Soapway. Soapy fun. Bye. Why do I have this in my hand?